Hi everybody, G here. I have a very interesting video for you that all has to do with capturing swarms and relo relocating a swarm into uh, its own brood box. So this has been going on for the last 20 days or so. Uh, it all started with me noticing a swarm at the top of a tree, like very, very high. Um, so high that there was no way that I'd be able to, to get it. So we're gonna show you some footage of that. And, um, and then long and behold, 24 hours later in the morning, I noticed that there were bees flying around uh, an old swarm trap that I had put in the tree, maybe 400 feet or so from my bee yard. So I'm pretty sure now that what happened is that that swarm decided to move into my swarm trap, uh, which is awesome. It means I don't lose half of my bees from my bee colony. But uh, it was quite a process. The first time I had to deal with that and uh, it was interesting. Um, a few interesting things happened along the way, so I won't ruin the surprise for you now. But um, before we get to the swarm trap, let me show you the footage of what the actual bee swarm looked like and how high it was in the tree. So the swarm is at the top of that tree that's way in the center over there. Um, can't really see it, but you might be able to see some of the bee activities there. This is really, really high. I don't have a ladder this big and where this tree is located, there's no way we can, I can't call anyone, bring a truck. So, show you where they are. The very top of that tree. One, one thing I did as well after noticing that swarm up in the tree is, you know, you, you hear all these tricks about how to force a bee swarm to get lower on a tree. One of them is to bang, um, to use like a hammer or, or a shovel with a, um, like a crowbar and just bang them together. And then the high pitch is supposed to apparently mimic the thunder and force the bees to come down. I tried that, it did not work. Um, but I only tried it for like 15 minutes. And um, another thing I've tried is to set up uh, a, a mock abandoned bee colony. So I use brood boxes that I had laying around with some old comb. I set it like at the bottom of that tree, trying to do essentially a, a swarm trap, uh, try to lure them in. Uh, all I managed to do with that is to cause my bee yard to kind of go and rob that, that mock beehive. So that created quite a frenzy. So that was not a good idea. So at that point I was kind of, thinking, you know what, those bees are lost. I wish them good luck. And uh, it's not until the day after that I noticed that there was activity around my swamp trap. Uh, I thought for sure those bees were lost, but then I happened to walk by that old swamp trap and noticed some bees were bearding at the entrance. And uh, although I thought Maybe that was not my swarm. I'm pretty sure it is, but let me show you. So my reaction when I noticed there were bees on my swarm trap. Hi everybody. I have something very interesting to show you today. So what you see behind me over there is a, it's a swarm trap. A swarm trap is something that um, you can put on your land with the hope of attracting wild bees or um, any bees that are looking for a home. So when you have a swarm, which is how bees will multiply in nature, uh, they'll look for a home and uh, these boxes are, are made to, to attract them. So they're, they're supposed to mimic an empty beehive. So I put that up two years ago in that tree and um, all it has in it was um, it's five frames. So used frames that I pulled from uh, another colony that's uh, had not made it through the winter. So there it is. You can actually see the bee bearding uh, at the bottom there. There's actually a colony that's established itself in there, which is awesome. Uh, that means free bees. I'll, I'll put my bee suit on and uh, I'm gonna go closer and have a, a closer look. I'd like to move that. There's a kind of a, a little shrub there that's like with leaves blocking the entrance. I'm gonna clean that up. All right, I put my bee suit on and uh, 
I've been looking at it and actually I'm not convinced that maybe this is not my swarm from yesterday that's moving into that box. Um, as you see, like there, there was a clump of bees there that's underneath the entrance earlier. That's no longer there. They have all moved inside. And uh, I've been looking at the, the bee traffic and I, there seems to be way more bees coming into that box than, than leaving. So that's interesting. I'll, uh, I'll give you a closer look. So as you can see, oh, this is the main entrance and there's, uh, they've all gone in there. And uh, as I mentioned earlier, what I have in there are empty frames. Uh, there were honey frames, I'm assuming they've all been robbed by now, uh, but the bees are going in. And also an uh, interesting thing is that the lid is kind of not, uh, like this, the lid is just resting on top and it's ajar. So there's actually bees getting in from, from the top. if you can see that they're just there at the top also using that as a as a like a top entrance so it's really interesting and um yeah the more i'm, I'm watching it the more I, I can see that it's bees coming in there's not many bees leaving this box it's possible i got lucky and that the swarm that i lost in the tree yesterday actually moved in there um, it could be a coincidence. I just went uh, before taking this video to have a look at that swarm uh, and it's no longer in the tree. So the, the, the timing seems, the timing is, seems right for that. So it's possible I was wrong and that um, this is actually my swarm, which would be awesome. Um, and also, like I said earlier, like this is, I'm really surprised this is really not a good uh, spot for a trap. I'll show you kind of where it is. So it's there and then when you turn right You know, there's all kind of trees and foliage that the bees have to to go through before they're actually Able to get out. So there is a creek So the bees really kind of go onto this branch and that's kind of their flight path and uh, also over there I can I can see them coming so then they on the box there. Uh, on top of it is a screech owl box that my wife uh, had me installed. Uh, I think it's mostly used by squirrels. <laughs> I haven't seen an owl in there, but yeah, it's really interesting. And the bee yard um, is this way, about uh, 300 feet, maybe that way. You can kind of see it uh, through, through the trees over there. So really interesting. So what I'm gonna do is wait a little bit uh, I don't want to disrupt them right now. So we'll give them a few more hours and we'll uh, we'll have a look later. It's now about 5 p.m. and uh, it looks like you know, there's still a lot of bees on there. It's a good sign. Uh, there's always a chance that the bees may decide that this is not a box for them. So what I'm going to do, uh, I'm going to leave them tonight and tomorrow. And uh, I think tomorrow evening, I'm going to be moving them into a brood box. There's a lot of traffic, way more traffic than this morning. I did move the top a little bit to reduce the gap there. There's a lot of traffic at the entrance. All right, so we're now about a week and a half later. Uh, the swarm is still in their swarm trap. Um, it still has a good uh, you know, incoming outgoing traffic, but today is the day that we're gonna move it into uh, a normal 10 frame box and add it to the bee yard. So I'm doing the prep work right now and then tonight is when we'll be moving it out. So this is kind of what I have for now. So I, I, I use, this is a hive stand that I had from last year. Uh, I had to build another uh, bottom 
uh, for it. I have an empty box. Uh, my swarm trap has five frames, so we're gonna give them another five frames of uh, plastic foundation that they can use to expand. Put that there. They'll go so the frames that are in the swarm trap will fit right there. And we have the inner cover. This is something I use in the fall to feed the bees, but it's gonna do for now. I don't have another, a proper inner cover and then I have a new roof that I built that will go on later and there you go that's going to be the new house for the swarm so that's it so now let's get ready to remove it from its trap and uh, relocate it here as you can see it's uh in good proximity from the uh, the other hives uh, it's not an ideal location it's not really facing the right way but um, I, it's, that will do for now for this late in the season uh, ideally I don't think that that swarm will make it in more and more than one brood box so we'll we'll have to see but uh, these ones are doing very well so far all right, it's about seven at night. I was really hoping to take this down today, but I really don't know what I was thinking in the way that I hooked up or uh, no, fixed that box to the tree. There's no real easy way to, to lower it down. Like ideally I would have used like a rope or something like a pulley system or have a platform supporting it um, that I could easily unhook it from. So. Rookie mistake, I guess. So I think what I'm gonna do, uh, I was considering maybe just opening up, opening it up and taking the frames down, but this is pretty, pretty high. Like this is at least seven feet tall or seven feet high. Um, I'm not really comfortable with uh, the thought of like being at the top of a step ladder and trying to open the, open the roof and remove the frames. So what I'm gonna do is build a platform that I'm gonna attached to the bottom of that tree not to the bottom of the box but on the tree and then i'll be able to cut uh the strap there that's holding it so you can see how like under the mess i did there this is nonsense <laughs> uh, so if i can cut that strap and then just lower the box on the platform that would be right underneath that will should make it easier uh, for me to lower it after so i think that's what i'm gonna do the plan for tonight will be to abort the uh, the move of the colony to their new home and to build that that platform there i'll just use some two by fours and uh, then some straps and uh, hopefully that will work better all right so here we are about uh, 90 minutes later this is what i designed <laughs> to it's against another tree now but to uh, put under that swarm trap so it's essentially Kind of a fork with uh, two by fours that uh, can lean against the tree and prevent it from from uh, going from one side to the other, you know. And um, then what I'm going to do, well, and there's a wide platform there for to put the swarm trap on top, and then this would get strapped all along with um, with straps like very tight so that it it doesn't move. So I guess we'll see. I'll try to. Uh, We'll try to use it tomorrow night to get the swarm trap out of the tree. All right, so hot day today, but it's the day where we're gonna try to get the swarm trap off the tree. So what I'm gonna do is install that support that I built underneath it, and we'll see how that goes.
that's where we are now. It's a bit, uh, it's not quite aligned, but I will do the trick. Uh, I think once I drop it, it should be able to just rest on, on there. It's meant to be temporary anyway, just so that I can then uh, take it down safely. So this is just to prevent from it from dropping on the ground, which would be not good. I'm really debating, I'm thinking uh, instead of bringing that swarm to my bee yard, I might try to uh, just put a, a hive stand over there and keep it, keep it here instead. Uh, the worry is that this is such a small colony and if I bring it into my bee yard with the others, um, it would probably make it more susceptible to robbing, which means that bees from the other colonies would, would come in and try to rob their honey and resources, which is uh, not what we want, because uh, these bees will need support uh, right away. I'll need to start to feed them with sugar syrup so they can at least have um, a good amount of resources, a good amount of bees going into the, the winter. Whew. It's really hot. <laughs> so, so what I've done, I've, I've decided I'm gonna, I'm gonna start it there. And uh, the thing is, uh, maybe I'll move it a little bit. Uh, this kind of gives them the same kind of bee line <laughs> um, that they use now. It's a bit lower. I'm hoping that because uh, after I move the frames to that box, uh, it's possible some of the bees will still come over there. So, I will put that swarm box on the roof of this one. And hopefully they will kind of get the message that uh, this is the box because there won't be any frames left into the swarm trap when I'm done. They're all going to be in here. If I remember well, there's five of them in there. So they'll all be here in the middle. And then I might put some, if there's some honey frames, put some uh, empty ones uh, in between. And then we'll, that will be their, their place at least until the winter. And then when it comes time to winterize them, I'll move them with the other bees. So uh, I might clear up a bit more bush here, but this is kind of the review coming out. It's just kind of fly that way. So kind of odd, like I'm surprised. Like this to me, this is not really the best uh, location for a beehive, but hey, they, they chose it. So I'm gonna try to keep it here. Right, I'm on top of my stepladder. I have a smoker ready to go. Don't know if I'll need it. Uh, it's the kind of thing, like I said in previous videos, where um, it's always when you don't think you need it that you end up needing it. So I don't really know these bees. They could be a bit aggressive. They don't seem to mind me being here right now, but we'll have to see. It's like opening a treasure box. So as we can see, they have done a pretty good job at uh, Propolizing, it's not in the dictionary, it's a beekeeping term, but they've used propolis, which is tree resin, to seal this entrance, you know? And propolis is also something that's used to sanitize uh, the inside of the beehive because it has some antibacterial properties. So, so um, yeah, I just want to show you, and we can see already there are quite a bit of bees in there. So it looks like it's a, uh, pretty good size swarm so uh, I think before I go further actually I will it's kind of slipping yeah I'm able to have a look here there you go the first look inside this bee swarm and there are one two three four five frames like I suspected This is pretty amazing when you think about it, that all these bees moved and established themselves into this swarm trap. So I don't think it'd be sustainable for them to stay there for the whole winter. That's why we're going to move them to something proper and also do an inspection to make sure that we have a queen 
and uh, she's laying. So I got lucky, I was able to remove the strap without having to cut it. Uh, this swarm trap is now resting on this support. Um, it's not as heavy as I thought it would, which would make sense because I suspect that uh, most of the frames in there just have a lot of eggs and brood. Uh, honey is heavy, but brood is not. So what I'm gonna do now is um, I'm gonna go get another uh, kind of platform so I can, I don't have to put that on the ground. I can put it right next to this colony and uh, then transfer the frames over okay so the plan is for me to climb up move it from there to there and then get down the step ladder and i can then move it from there to this platform and then get it closer this is the final spot i just installed it that's where these bees are going to go it's not too far from where they are uh still the risk that some bees might be lost um well, there's a saying when it comes to moving bee colonies is you either move it by three feet or three miles, right? Because the bees will come back to the exact same location and hopefully they'll be able to find their hive that's like right there by smelling their queen. Right, that wasn't too bad, uh, but as I said, lots of the foragers coming back are still going to platform because they know this is where the hive used to be, even though it's right here. So I'm going to quickly now uh, move the frames and then I'll let that box rest. The first frame I pulled is a very nice frame of resource. So they do have, they have drawn some comb out of this frame and it's full of like bee bread and nectar. They haven't really started to work much on this side. Uh, this was a frame I had scraped. So, um, but this side is good. So we're gonna put it in there with uh, the, the drawn combs toward the inside. There you go, so the first bees to move into their new box. Very interesting. This is the second frame and uh, because the swarm tra trap is a bit deeper, they started to build a comb underneath. So I'm going to remove that. But all of this is cap brood. So there is a queen in this hive. I'll try to find her. And same thing on the other side, like lots of cap brood. It's all new bees that will be emerging very soon. So I think as far as the swarm is concerned, this is very good. I see larvae. 
uh, have a look for eggs, but this is, I'm happy what I'm seeing now. On the frame, same thing. This one actually has a lot of brood in it, um, which uh, is too bad. Like I'd like to be able to keep these bees, um, larvae, etc. And that's the last frame, same thing, a huge comb underneath. Um, what I had to be careful of is to, uh, I didn't want to remove the comb without having assurance that the queen was not on it. I kind of, because uh, that'd be tragic, but my, I actually just saw my queen. And uh, let's see if I can locate her again for you. There she is. There's the queen, the queen of the swarm. Is being very busy laying eggs and uh, getting this new nest going. So now that she's there, I'm gonna hurry and remove this whole cone and put that frame back into the hive. All right, so there she is. So I've, I've moved the queen. I have one frame left. Uh, it looks like a resource frame, which is uh, normal. It's at the extremity. Um, has a little comb at the bottom, but at least now the queen is in there. The bees will smell her and they should be able to make their way uh, here. Uh, this comb that I just removed has uh, mostly uh, bee larvae, some pollen and bee bread, nectar. That's pollen. It's very nice. All right, just explaining where we are now. All the bees are finally in the box. Oh, it's not closed all the way. I'll fix that later. 
but I've put the swarm trap on top so that the bees that were in it can migrate in there. I put the comb I've pulled right next to it. I will try to give them back this big piece and maybe another one because these had the brood on it. So it'd be nice if it's undamaged, they might be able to still reuse it. But what we have here is all the lost foragers. So the bees that were out um, when we removed the swarm trap, kind of wondering what the heck, I swear my house was there, but it's here. So there is still a chance that these bees might not be able to make their way back, but I'm hoping that there's enough of the smell that uh, they'll be attracted to go here. Uh, the good news is that there's already bees that are fanning. So these bees there with their bums in the air, what they're doing is indicating to the other bees that the queen is in, in that colony. So that they're trying to, to spread her pheromones and spare her, her scent. I've also purposely put some of their own little combs at the entrance there so that um, you know, that would smell like their colony as well. Just to give them a heads up. But it's a good sign already that even some uh, foragers, you can see there, there's bees with pollen, these orange pockets that are actually landing and going in there. Right, so it's not all lost. Um, I gave them a top entrance. So some are going in there as well. And I see bees coming in and out. So I, uh, but the important thing is that I see some coming back, uh, which is what we want. So uh, I think it's a success so far. Um, despite all the bees flying around, I have to say this is a very docile uh, colony. It's not unusual for the small bee colonies to not be too aggressive. Um, and especially, I know the colony that this one came from, or that I suspect it came from for the swarm, was, is one of my most uh, docile ones. So, uh, so right now what we're gonna do is get a frame, some elastic bands, and I'll show you how we're gonna give them back um, these, uh, these uh, comb. Back in my garage, just quickly. So what I've done, I used, uh, I took a deep frame and I removed, removed the plastic foundation because what we want is uh, this part and I'm gonna use elastics to put the wax comb back in here to give it back to the colony. So I hope I have elastic somewhere. All right, explaining a bit what's gonna happen here. So I've put some elastic bands on each side of this frame, and that's gonna to be to hold that piece of wax comb in it. So the goal is to try to have it so that it's kind of holding in there solid enough so that I can just put that frame back into that box and the bees will continue to fill this frame with, with wax until uh, I can remove the bands, so.
All right, so this is where we are now. I was able to successfully move all this comb onto two frames, it's held with elastic bands. Um, honestly, it's the first time I have to do this, but I know this is a method that um, people use when they remove like swarms from you know, houses or walls. You know, so we to preserve the, the comb as much as possible. So the bees will repair it. If there's any brood that was damaged, that's no longer viable, the bees will clean it. For example, on the way to the back, you can see some larvae are exposed, like these will likely not make it. So the, the bees will clean that out. Um, already there's a bit less bees going to uh, where the swamp trap used to be. Lots of traffic around here. So I'm just gonna quickly uh, put these in there, close it and let them be for, for probably a day. All right, mission accomplished. So for now, this is all I'm gonna do with them. I think they had enough, uh, not drama, but enough action for today. I've put the uh, comb on the frames back in there. Lots of bees on the outside, some bees coming out. I'm gonna leave the swarm trap on the ground actually, because I noticed some of them come still where the entrance is. So hopefully the proximity to that hive will kind of help them. Um, as I mentioned, there's still quite a bit of bee traffic happening. What was previously, I'm not too worried. Um, they seem to be going everywhere. So I, th I think they'll be able to, to make it. Uh, so I will keep an eye on that. Um, the uh, important thing is that my queen is in there. Lots of bees going in and out of it. If a few bees get lost, uh, it's very unfortunate, but uh, it's kind of just the way it is. So, um, yeah, again, lots of action happening in the front. More bees that are fanning. With their bums in the air. And again, the bums in the air is to indicate that this is our house. This is where our queen is. So join the party. So this has been pretty interesting, I think. It's uh, the first time that I catch a wild uh, bee swarm. Actually, it's not wild. I'm pretty sure it's one of mine. <laughs> Regardless, it was nice to be able to catch it. Uh, it's, it's August 19, I believe, today. And uh, it's getting kind of late for new bee colonies to, uh, to establish themselves. You don't really have any bee swarms happening in, uh, you know, at this time of the year in September, usually. And uh, if they do, they will need, they need a lot of care to be able to build up to go through to the winter. So that will be it for that video for today. Um, I will have some updates uh, on this hive. Uh, when I start feeding it, I'll show you how it's doing. But at least <laughs> I think it should be an interesting video showing you from the beginning of where we saw the swarm to noticing it into the swarm trap and then making the link that, oh, this is actually mine. <laughs> and uh, getting to the point where now it's in the beehive. A few lessons learned to this process, I would say, is that I did wait uh, almost over two weeks before relocating it. If I would have done that sooner, uh, I would have avoided the whole uh, extra work I created myself with the, uh, the loose wax comb that was built under the frames. So I think 
I would say no more than one week to relocate a swarm would be a good idea. Uh, otherwise, you get into that kind of problem. But in a way, was, I was able to use that to show you how um, a loose comb can be put back into uh, a regular Landstrot 10 frame box. So Hey, it's me again. You thought this video was over, didn't you? So this is the day after and uh, I'm not done editing my video yet. So I figured that would kind of add a bit of an update to it. Uh, one thing I'm going to do that I just thought of yesterday night when I was going through all my bee stuff is I do have two frames that are um, empty. So these were into a nuke box that I was when I tried to do a split uh, that did not work. So I have two of those and this is technically all ready for the queen to lay her eggs in. So I'm going to give that to this uh, swarm. So that way they don't have to work on building all this wax. So what I have done though, because this had been in a, in a wooden box uh, for a while, I, I put them in the freezer overnight just to make sure there's no uh, wax moth or other things in it. So these have been frozen. I'm going to add them to this box and uh, then that's it. But um, here, I'll show you what, uh, what it looks like here. Looks pretty good. I'm going to put this here just to be strategic on which frame I'm going to remove. Since these are all ready for the queen to lay, uh, I'm going to put them where a brood nest would be. So I know that uh, this frame and this frame are mostly resources. So I'm going to insert them in between so the first one to come off would be this empty frame right here and that should be easy because it should be nobody on it see maybe i should have but that's okay so this one i'm gonna put there, there you go so we're gonna that frame actually I'm gonna put it in between the drawn cone and uh, actually no I changed my mind I'm gonna put it where I plan to put it originally so just between the drawn comb and this resource frame it's gonna fit right there so that's that's one go things back together hopefully the queen will notice that there's a nice empty frame there one of the this frame it's much harder to do this with one hand there you go see this there's no bees on there here and that one is i'm gonna put it actually here those two and then they will do what they wish with it there we go so that's pretty good by doing this i'm saving them from having to build two full frames and uh no, this is awesome because uh, building a wax really takes a lot, of, a lot of energy from them. So that's what I wanted to show. I'm going to close this off now. There you go. All set. Yeah, they're getting a bit excited, but not too much. Still a small colony. So that's it. There it is. Again, thank you for watching. I hope you learned something. Um, as I've said before, this is my own way of doing beekeeping. It's not perfect. It works for me. If you have any questions, uh, put them in the comment. Um, or, or if you have just any comments, criticism, I'm always willing to learn. And I hope you learned something. If you want to learn more, follow my channel. I have lots of more videos coming up. And uh, I thank you for watching. And we'll see you next time.